This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build your beautiful online presence and run your business. Hello everybody and welcome back to The Average. Today we are testing out something that I really hate, I always have hated, but now I'm starting to think maybe I've hated it because the way I was taught to use it wasn't fun or useful to me at the time. So I'm thinking I'm gonna try out some soft pastels again and give them another whirl because I've seen some pretty decent paintings out there with these and I was thinking, I'm at that stage with my art where I really wanna to try to do different stuff with different media. I'm totally a mixed media artist, so it makes sense for me to try out stuff. This is how it looks, and they are absolutely gorgeous. I do love the color range of them. They are beautiful. Look at this pink, that is exquisite. And these blues, everything, so many nice colors. So I don't know why I was limiting myself. As you can see, they probably look a little bit used already because yeah, I've used them. And let me explain. I did this a little paint over with them just to try them out and also I want to do a bigger piece and I'm starting to think that I need to do smaller studies or bigger stuff that I want to do first. So today we're going to recreate this painting or this image that I did um, using a bigger sheet of paper and maybe more detail and a little bit more complexity. I'm hoping, I'm hoping I don't just recreate the same thing again. But this is kind of like the layout of what I want to do. As you can see, I used a little bit of watercolour because I want to use the pastels in a way that I would use them, not just to like make something completely out of pastels because I just don't think that would suit me. And yeah, I'm getting more experimental. I want to be more experimental and I want my, I want my style to evolve a little bit. And that is why I'm using these. And I think they're really pretty and I think they give a real vibrancy to stuff. And also, I'm really starting to think of how I can use this in my horror comic and use this kind of misty imagery or glow or hue to stuff or fade them off in the background. There was this um, YouTuber called James Gurney and you can find him. He is an incredible artist and I feel like I learned a lot from him. So he uses pastels in the background to kind of mute down the distance. That's called um, artistic perspective, I think where, you know, in the background things are a little bit faded because they're in the distance, they're harder to see. And I really need to start thinking about stuff like that a little bit more, thinking more whilst I paint. And yeah, so we're gonna recreate that um, today, that painting that I did, which, which is here. And I really liked it, just ignore this. This was just a little bit of a study using watercolors, I think. And yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna do this. And I think I wanna modify the overall composition. I'm not sure about the sea because I think in my horror comic there might not be any sea nearby but I want to think about maybe using a street here or something. I don't know so I'm going to do some thumbnails for this and figure it out. You may be wondering what the heck this is for. So if you saw my Ikea video uh, months and months ago I found this little roller at Ikea. Not this one. I found another little roller at I found an IKEA roller and it was for like children and then I realised that I really enjoyed it. So pesto. She's chattering at birds. <laughs> so loud. I saw this roller at IKEA and I bought another one because that one broke because it was for children, it wasn't very sturdy. So I think this is probably for like lino printing because it's a hard rubber rather than like a roller that you would but anyway, I've been using it to layer down a, a little bit of an area first and I quite enjoy it. So I'm probably going to use this as well. Okay, uh, I'm going to start out by getting my watercolour paper. I think this is going to be quite a chatty long video, so bear with me. This is my watercolour paper. This is a Arches cold pressed. Cold pressed basically means that it's toothy. I found this out recently. I've been learning a lot, guys. And um, hot press means that it's less toothy, but I really, really like this Archer's paper. I think this is the best watercolor paper that I've come across. And I, I've used a lot of different watercolor paper. So maybe for other people, it's not as good. But for me personally, I really like this, this paper. I'm gonna be using watercolor with my uh, pastels. And you're probably wondering why aren't I using 
gouache. I found that it was a little bit difficult to use gouache with these because if I wanted to go over something water, it was kind of reactivating the gouache. So yeah, it just, it made sense to just use watercolor here because it will be a lot easier to manipulate when I come to using the, the pastels. So like I said before, this video is sponsored by Squarespace and it offers such a great range of website building tools for you. I use Squarespace to host my portfolio site and I, I really felt like it was useful to have something for people to go to to search for your name and to see your artwork. In the future, I'm thinking about selling my comics using my own commerce website on Squarespace and I think that would be really handy. I just took a template that I liked and I went with it and then I just uploaded a lot of images that I thought were interesting and then I went to the about me page and I wrote a little bit of a description about myself and it was super straightforward and easy to use. Please head to the link in the description if you would like 10% off your first purchase of your website or domain. Okay so there's my layer of yellow. I'm looking at my thumbnails now and what I decided to do is create a little bit of a graveyard motif. So there's going to be some graves here in the foreground and then we're going to have the motel from my horror comic in the background. I think I'm going to get started as this is still wet because it makes sense for me to just go for it. With this paper it kind of, it takes a while to dry and you do get a lot of nice bleeding of the watercolour if you use wet on wet which can be nice, quite a nice effect when we come to use the pastels. I think it might look really cool. So I'm trying to mimic kind of the clouds that I had in my original piece. I'm just gonna layer it out using like a fine wash of watercolor and then try and figure out where on my page everything else will go. I'm gonna put, pop the motel here. I quite like using pastels with watercolors so far. I think, I think that's what I enjoy. I still haven't used the pastels enough to figure that out yet. Obviously using this paper is quite different to using the paper in my sketchbook because it can handle a lot of water. In my sketchbook I have a lot of textures that I really enjoy that won't show up here. So I need to try and mimic that somehow because I really do like the way that it kind of looks rough and it's not quite soaking into the paper. I really think that's pretty so I want to try and emulate that and I think I'll probably get that look with pastels a little bit. When I go over with pastels I'm hoping that this will lighten up the colour. I am being really experimental with this piece because I really am trying to get looser with new art supplies and stuff. Like I said I'm a mixed media artist so I really want to try and delve into like using as much different techniques and things that I can because I think like it's really helping me evolve and it really excites me as well to try out new supplies. Yeah, I really want it to be super dark where like the moon is there so the light would be coming this way. So over here we're going to have a gravestone. Let me know if you like these kind of longer chatty videos um, where I'm trying to show you how I'm doing my process. So in my painting I do have like a really light area where the, the sky meets the land and it's kind of like a purpley hue and I do have a little bit of white wash that I'm going to use for that because I feel like it needs to stick out a little bit. I'm kind of making up the motel as I go along but I will be looking at reference pictures. So what I'm doing now is just trying to give a little bit of an underpainting to this image before I go in with the pastels. So using it in my sketchbook roughly, I realized that that is kind of the best approach for me. I think they work really nicely with watercolors. They kind of complement each other the way that they're a little bit um, random, you know, a little bit organic in the way that they can spread or move or push. So I think it's interesting to use them together. So yeah, like I said, I'm trying to block out some shapes here with the watercolour and I really like the way that this um, moon kind of, it's not so nice in the way that it spreads out in the original image. It kind of has like this shape to it where the rays stop, which obviously is not um, realistic, but I like the way that it looks. I have this attitude of kind of going for stuff and then regretting it later, so we're just going to see how this turns out. 
So at this point, I'm starting to think that maybe I can start using my pastels within the image. I'm a little bit anxious to do that because I know once I start adding it, it will be harder to add the watercolor um, to it because it won't react well with the pastel. So I'm just thinking like if I need to specify anything else here. Like I said, this is a very experimental piece for me. I'm starting to really um, just get a feel for this medium and see how it works with other stuff that I use. But yeah, so far so good. So let's just go for it, I guess. Yeah, so I'm gonna use this kind of uh, white. Okay, so I'm going in quite roughly and please pastel users, if you use pastels and I'm using it completely wrong, please, please be nice to me because I don't know what I'm doing basically. I um, I think I used these a little bit when I was in school but no one really taught me how to use them or about them really. So I'm just kind of going for it and seeing what happens. Now I'm going to go back in with water and you can see that it pulls the water, it doesn't really work and it kind of lifts up some of the powder that I have here but I'm going to just use it like that anyway because I think it softens the edges and it makes some interesting textures where the water isn't allowed to be pushed. That's how I like to use it anyway. It's probably completely wrong. See look I'm getting like pools of paint colour and pigment here which is pretty fun for me. I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> People might be screaming, you're using it wrong but I don't care. I think with using these pastels I really get to work into the painting like with my hands and I've always been quite a textile person when it comes to art so I think like it kind of is a really nice thing for me to just kind of like work in the paint and do different stuff like that. I think it works really nicely for me and um, I was quite surprised at how much I really like using pastels now. I never ever ever like them and I swore that I would never use them I just never really thought about it to be honest and then I saw these paint these ones on um, I think it was Amazon and I just would I was like those colors look really nice and it looks quite fun to maybe use that and I don't know what came over me but I was like yeah I'm gonna try those out and I'm really glad that I'm I'm using them to be fair let's add a little bit of orange hue to this moony area. I know that's a bit weird because it's uh, a moon and people genuinely associate like white light with the moon but really the light that you're seeing from the moon is the reflection from the sun so it makes sense to have it a little bit yellow especially in this little imaginary world that I'm building. So I'm going in with these Polychromos uh, Faber-Castell pencils, they're my absolute favourite. So I'm just detailing the stuff that's going on in the foreground a little bit more because that will be um, more detailed because things that are closest to us would have more detail so I need to make sure that that is clear. I really like these pencils a lot and I think they really work with what I'm doing here. I would say I haven't really got a style for the comic yet and I am working on the script. Uh, I've written about maybe a few pages because this is still going on and yeah I think I'm a little bit intimidated by this project to be honest so that's why I've been kind of putting it off but now that I'm sort of finding a style for it drawing more imagery to help me with the story I think it's coming along a little bit more. And I found sort of a theme for the story. So it's all gonna be about kind of belonging somewhere. Like that's gonna be the gen general theme, like belonging and I think that is gonna work. And I think before I didn't really hit those notes of the story. So it was, I was putting off doing it, if that makes sense. And now that it is coming along, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be trying out to get it done quicker. Still bear with me, please folks though. So basically, 
this is sort of the image. I need to work on some more details. I do want to define the shape of this building a little bit more. I wanted this to be like the sign of the motel above it. And I know it wouldn't really make sense lighting wise for this to be so prominent, but I think maybe it would just be like a bright colored sign. So that's my reasoning for using this bright. I'm kind of liking the way that it's looking now a little bit more. Pencil out where this is kind of a hill going down and then that is in the distance so I need to make that a little bit clearer. So let's try it. I'll probably go over this again with some pastel just to see if I can knock it back a little bit because right now it's a little bit in your face. So I'm hoping it's clear that this is kind of like a hill in front of this stuff going back. Maybe I need to add like a little bit of like land here. So it's not just like this is sticking out of nowhere. So I think what I'll do is I'll mark that out. Maybe this composition is a little bit odd and I wish I had maybe spent some more time on the thumbnail, but hey, lessons learned, right? I think it would be dark here as well. Even though the moon is like there, I think it just grounds the motel a little bit more. And I do like the way that that purple looks with the hill, so it kind of looks like the hill is beyond going past and the light is shining onto the hill, so I'm going to use this purple to kind of define that hill a little bit more in the background. I think I want to, yeah, I want to like get rid of this line here so when the moon is like hitting her arm it's definite that there's a form there. I think that will look cool. I'm just going to like blend it in with my paintbrush a little bit. So, right, that's the process so far. I think I'm gonna work on this a little bit more and I will meet you guys at the end, I guess. So that's the final piece. I probably could do a lot more to this and like knock this back a bit more and play around with it more. But I feel like as well, I'm getting to that stage where I'm overworking something and pretty okay with how it is now. I really enjoy using pastels with watercolors. I think it just, it really is a nice uh, cohesion of materials. And yeah, I'm gonna use those a little bit more and I love these colors. These by the way, if I didn't mention, are Jack Richardson, Richardson? I don't know how to say that. Richardson soft hand rolled pastels. They're pretty expensive. They're about 50 quid, which was really crazy for me, considering I don't even like pastels. But I saw these and I thought these looked so nice that maybe they would be really cool to try and use. And yeah, that's it. That's the end of the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this kind of chatty, more talky uh, video. And also thanks again to Squarespace for the sponsorship and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Oh, one more thing. If you don't have a fixative for these pastels, hairspray is a pretty good cheap alternative and it works, it holds it down. I've always used hairspray for fixative, so there's a little tip for you guys if you didn't know. 